So we're going to see how to use a spreadsheet to basically interview some data to obtain some ideas for our reporting. This is a fairly simple data set. It's just a couple of years of uh, spending data by department and revenues at the bottom for a city government. Uh, and we're going to re recreate some reporting that was done uh, by a reporter with this. Okay, now first thing we do always with some new data is save it under a new name. I'm going to save it as City Budget Edit. And that means that if I mess this up any new way, I can go back to the original data. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is just a bit of formatting. I'm going to select columns B and C and turn them into currency. So we select column B just by clicking on its letter. Shift and then the right arrow selects column C as well. Now if I right click, I will get an option to format the cells. You can format them as currency. Take out those decimal places, don't need any. And a dollar sign. And now that is nicely formatted as currency. Okay, so that's all good. Column A still has a problem. Uh, we can't read it all, but that's easily fixed. Select it format and let's auto fit the column width. Fine, so now we're going to start doing some calculations. The obvious thing to do is to work out how these dollar sums have changed from year to year. So all calculations in Excel begin with an equal sign. Then this one, we need this figure so cell C2 minus this figure, and you'll see that's a negative number. Now the nice thing about spreadsheets is having done a calculation once, you can copy it on down the column, um, and it will do the same calculations for those rows. So one way of doing that, move the cursor to the bottom right-hand corner of the cell, it will become and a narrow black cross, double click, and the calculation runs down until we hit a blank in the adjacent column. We want to copy down further, that's easy to do. Control C to copy, and then we can select the area we want to copy into, and Control V will copy it in there. We'll need to do some tidying up these zeros we don't actually want. Delete that, delete that. The, the error message in, in here is because it's trying to subtract text from text, which is clearly impossible. Let's put the title in there. And again, another zero. Get rid of that. And we have our column in change. Now I'm not going to format it to currency just yet. I want to show you a little trick in Excel that's worth remembering. Um, before we do that. Now, often um, I'll be calculating, making many calculations and sometimes deleting the columns that the calculations are from. And in that case, uh, you'll see if I deleted column B, this figure would no longer exist because what's in that cell is not actually the number, it's the formula up there in the formula bar. But we can Having made a calculation, if we think we might delete something on which it depends, we can convert to the values. So I'm just going to copy that entire column. I'm going to put the cursor in the cell at the top of the next column. I'm going to paste, but not a normal paste. I'm going to go to this paste menu and do paste values. Now those values have gone in. They're in a weird format. Uh, it's actually, I think, because they've tried to uh, Excel has tried to convert it into a percentage, which is wrong. But don't panic, we can fix the format very easily. Um, format cells again. Currency is what we want. No decimal places. And a dollar sign. And we're back to the numbers. And you'll see, this column we actually have the numbers. This one we have the formula. Now if I delete this column, We've got just the values, and that's fine. Okay, well, what else might we want to do with this data set? Well, change is one thing, 
percent change is possibly worth looking at as well. So I'm going to calculate that here. So what is the formula? Well, it begins with an equal sign as before. Um, and then it will be the change divided by the original number. Um, I'm not going to multiply it by 100 as you usually would with a percentage uh, because we can do that with the formatting later. Okay, so I, if I calculate that, it does it as a decimal fraction, not as a percentage, but we can fix that later. So again, I'm going to copy this down through the spreadsheet wherever we need those numbers. goes the formula and there it is um, put my header in here bold that up as well and now let's just correct the format for this column format those cells percentage this time I think two decimal places is good and there we are the percentage changes are now in. Okay, I'm just going to widen that column a little bit. And there we go. Now, next thing I'm going to show you is sorting data. As if we want to make sense of these changes, we probably want to sort them from largest to smallest. The trick in sorting data in Excel is to select exactly what you want to sort. Note I've included the header row uh, here. If you don't include everything or you include stuff you don't want to sort, you will mess up your data. So make sure you've selected what you want to sort before you do so. Now sort is found under the data menu. Here it is. I'm going to sort by percentage change from largest to smallest. Percentage change, sort on values from largest to smallest. Notice that Excel has recognized that your data has headers, so it's not going to sort the header with it. You will need to check that it's recognized that correctly. Click OK, and now we're sorted. I'm going to do the same for the revenues. Sort by percentage change from largest to smallest and OK. Now at this point I'm going to take a step back and think as a reporter what questions do I want to ask having done these calculations? Well, two things leap straight out to me from this data set. The largest percentage change is for something called the general city fund. That's change in spending. The largest change in where the revenue is coming from is revenue from other sources. Now, those strike me as pretty vague headings. Um, I, as a reporter, would want to know a lot about what the General City Fund is and what these other sources are. There seems to be a bit of vagueness around this budget. Okay, well, there was one other thing the reporter did that made this story rather more interesting. Uh, and basically, he followed a mantra of journalism. If your mother says she loves you, check it out. We must be skeptical of everything and check everything out. And that includes calculations that have been given to you that you haven't done yourself. So the next thing the reporter did was to add up these columns to check that the totals were correct. That's another operation in Excel. It begins with an equal sign because it's a calculation, but it's a sum. Then we put brackets and then we highlight the cells we want to total. And you can see that it's written in Excel as uh, the first and the last cell separated by a colon. Okay, do that. Um, first one's right. Now, just as we can copy calculations down columns, we can copy them across rows. So I'm going to control C, copy that cell with its calculation, copy it into here. Oh, 
That is not correct. And of course, neither will that one be. Um, and this was really when the reporter realized that there was something very strange going on with the numbers that were being reported and a rather more interesting story um, emerged. The last thing I'm going to show you with this data set is something called anchoring a calculation. And I'm going to move down to the revenues data, which were actually correct. I haven't done the totals, but they were correct. Now, the calculations we've shown so far basically copy down, um, copy down the spreadsheet. But what, for example, if we wanted to know this change here as a percentage of the total change? So that basically, well, we can start doing this calculation here, and it would be this number divided by this number. However, if that's what you do, when you copy it down to the next cell, it will try and divide uh, D21 by D32, which doesn't have any data in it. So we need to anchor on D31. And that's done by putting a dollar sign in front of the D and the 31. Now when I do that and copy down, it'll keep dividing by D31 as we move down. So again, I can just format that as a percentage with two decimal places. And I can check that this is right because the percentages should add up to 100, as indeed they do.